Commercial radio is big business with fat profits. If you get the formula right. From the heart of Manchester with today's best music. Now a new station is about to take the gamble and join the crowded airwaves in the northwest. It's a war out there. There are 22 other stations directly competing with us for listeners because the more listeners you have, the more money you make. MD John Myers is spending a small fortune on fancy studios, publicity and presenters. And in the war ahead, he's got a secret weapon. Hi, this is Derek Hatton, Century 105. We will be on the air when? But Derek Hatton, Hi, presenter Derek of the lunchtime phone-in, has never done anything quite like this before. Weekday, one o'clock, for the Dexy debate. I'm looking forward to it. I know you are. We'll have real time to be on the... Yay! Hi! Derek has to deliver. If, if the listeners don't like him, then he knows himself he, he'll have to go. Can John Myers launch his station successfully and transform Derek, the infamous politician, into Degsy, the radio star? No, 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 man. In posh new offices on Salford Quays, Manchester, testing of equipment and people is about to begin. The first of the new team are assembled. Today is the uh, very important day. We've got a transmitter on the top of Winter Hill, which they're working on now. And at some time over the next hour or so, uh, they're going to switch it on. And we've got radio switched to it now, which they just hiss coming out of, but hopefully it'll burst into life and it'll never be switched off. Unless we upset the radio authority. <laughs> They're about to play their very first record to test the station. We were on the air! We're on the air! Century, owned by Border Television, is taking on tough competition in the Northwest. There are 23 other commercial stations in the area and a very strong BBC presence. This is fantastic news, isn't it? You're listening to test transmissions for the all-new Century 105. Century is the brainchild of John Myers, and he's promised the radio authority his output will have twice as much speech as most commercial stations. But will speech bring in the listeners? <laughs> it's a fun radio station for adults. I mean, some stations uh, have really fallen by the wayside because they say we do intelligent speech we would never say that we do intelligent speech we do entertaining speech now you realize before we start John right that I've only just learned how to go from a pencil to a pen right that's right, so that level of right. ignorance we're starting with right well, okay okay we're going right, right back to basic right back to basic this is your mission control really this is your part of concord what john's I invested in state-of-the-art equipment because he's not just the managing director he's also a dj and will present the breakfast show on this you have your mic but teaching derek to press the right buttons and talk at the same time could be john's biggest challenge they've gone down in their level and that's that one. And that's that one there. So, all right, so you just drop the fader. Mm. So when you... Derek's a character, and that's what this station's about. The trick is to say something... Like 15, 20 years ago, everybody in this country knew him for his politics. He's had a little bit of a slump. But this is his real chance now to hit the big time again. And uh, how many people can have a new career at 51 years of age? But so it's, OK, I mean, that's, do you not, never use that then? Occasionally I yeah, do, yeah. yeah, but, yeah. yeah. The fact that he's nervous gives me confidence, because... If he goes on air nervous, he'll be successful. If he goes on air cocky, he'll die on his backside. You just want it to start immediately. You don't want to now wait the, the few weeks before we actually launch. You want to start, you want to actually get the calls. You want to, I want to open the lines now. 
I want to be in, I want a position where, yeah, okay, let's, let's start. Let people phone in. Let's start talking to them. Hi, this is Derek Hatton. Join me from the 8th of September on Century 105 for the Degsy debate. Right, you need to be, uh, don't shout as much, so back off a bit, okay? Don't write it down. Don't shout, just be a bit more relaxed. Hi, this is Derek Hatton. Okay. Join me, nice and slow. Okay. Hi, this is Derek Hatton. Join me for the Degsy debate starting the 8th of September, 1 o'clock every weekday. I'm looking forward to it, and you certainly will be. Right. If you went into a pub, you wouldn't say, Hi, I'm, De I'm Derek Hatton, Century 105. You wouldn't say that. So just say, Hi, this is Derek Hatton. I'm on Century 105. Right. Just a conversational. All right. Hi, this is Derek Hatton. Tune in on the 8th of September, Century 105, the Degsy debate. We'll have some fun. I'll be there, I'll be on the air, we will be there. I don't know what a crap that was. All right. Hi, this is Derek Hatton, I'll be here on Century 105, 8 o'clock. <laughs> you know I'm doing my head into you, you know. Hi, this is Derek Hatton, Century... No, don't shout, man, don't shout. Derek never right. did get good I enough to do his own Century trails. Don't miss my show every weekday, 1 o'clock. Just in case things don't work out well with Derek, John's going after a guaranteed route of getting audiences. Football. All right. So, do you get me comments? The hardest part when you're launching a new station is to get people to physically switch to your dial. If we can get exclusive football commentary, then we win. Because I'm physically forcing football supporters of that club to move that dial to find their commentary on the favourite team. Solskjaer takes it. Oh, he scored! Armed with a three million pound launch fund, John's yeah, wheeling yeah. and dealing to try to win exclusive match commentary rights away from all the other local radio stations. It's a game of poker, and he could end up paying too much. I've offered a six-figure sum, a fantastic amount of money, um, which has forced the other stations to give them more money, so at the very least we've cost them money. But, you know, to get Manchester United would be a dream. John's spending sprees gathering pace and his war chest is emptying fast. All I said is you can't be Christian and be gay. You can. You can. Of you course can. you can. It's down in black and white in the Bible. Thou shalt not lie with a man. Yeah, but what about? He's been poaching people from radio stations up and down the country. His most expensive acquisition is shock jock Scotty McClue. Loving your neighbour means delivering a cup of sugar on demand or helping them if they lock themselves out. It doesn't mean giving it the old best shot, does it? Yeah, but you never might be a fella. Look, are you gay? No. Right. No. Well, get off then and stop being such an idiot. I think he's the most talented late night phone in presenter without question in Britain. He really is. And he generates what I call the penis on the page effect with audience. But he's dangerous. The dangerous presenters get your listeners. He's good for business. Yes, well, um, I feel that some gay people are getting um, persecuted. And I, th I think it's wrong. Why? How can it be wrong to persecute somebody who's deviant? He says things which might not be politically correct. Um, but there's nothing wrong with that. How can being gay possibly be normal? Just because some of the listeners may disagree with him doesn't make it wrong that he doesn't have the right to go on air and say it. And he, he does it in an entertaining way. I don't accept you because you're thick. It all comes down to audience figures. To get those audiences, John's spending a million pounds advertising his station. I'm, I'm, John, I'm not being thick, but where, how do I know we're there? But he's not confident enough in Derek to have him photographed for the publicity campaign. For now, it'll just be John and Scotty on the posters. So you're outrageous and outspoken, are you, Scotty? I'm slightly, yes. Uh, so only slightly. Only the best advertising agency will do for John. He's gone to the one that came up with, have a break, have a Kit Kat. It's 105 FM, that's important, yeah? And this is the one I've picked, which is Century Radio, 105 FM. Funny, you bet your FM life, right? Because we applied it to a couple of ads, specifically for, for Scotty. I'm on FM, 
and I'm not PC. Outrageous and outspoken. Scott and McClue every evening from 10 p.m. Century. Of controversial, you bet your FM life. And the idea, the flexibility of this line, and I know that's, that's the kind of thing you like, is, is that you can precede the line, you bet your FM life, with anything. You know, controversial, outrageous, popular, funny, witty, outspoken. Okay? And I, 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 mm. and I think that's got some legs. I just think that you bet your FM life is is rude. I don't see it as being rude. I see it as being kind of cheeky, as being impudent, really, and a bit tongue. It's very tongue in cheek. Yeah. I uh, I can't live with you bet you bet your FM life. I mean, I I just think that uh, uh, FM says says the F word. Surely you can come up with a with a line that says what you wanted to say, but uh, it's something I can live with. There's no way that a bus company or a TV company or a poster company would allow their ideas to go up on poster sites. So, um, you know, we're having to tone those down, such as um, Derek Hatton, um, mass debate at one o'clock. Well, I, as much as we think that's a, a humorous line, I cannot see a bus company allowing mass debate with Derek Hatton at one o'clock going on the back of their buses. I think that uh, it's rude. With money pouring out, John's sales team are frantically selling airtime to advertisers ready for the moment the station goes on the air. I have to get the listeners, count them, and then sell them. The more numbers we deliver, the more money we make. It's as simple as that. I may stay in a century. But official audience figures won't be out for six months. For now, they'll have to convince potential advertisers they'll reach their target audience. Um, obviously, the surge in listeners from day one. Obviously, we've spoken about the campaign. So, uh, there's a bargain. The total cost for the three weeks of activity is just over £15,000 plus fat. I, I can't believe that you know a three-week campaign on a new radio station will deliver the uh, volume of sales that I would need. Right. I'll give you ten grand for the campaign. Ten grand? Yeah. <coughs> you know, ten grand, there's no way we can go down to that sort of figure. But if you were looking at making a decision now, then I'm sure we could, you know, potentially meet halfway. You know, basically, the like people who are buying airtime on our station are buying it out of trust. But if we don't deliver those figures, when the figures come in, our credibility is shot. John's renting a flat around the corner from the station. His family are still living in the northeast until they sell their house and find somewhere locally. You do miss the wife and kids and telling them everything that's gone on today. That's what you miss, is that you, you'll never guess what's happened today. Um, sales had a really good day today. So, looks like we're going to hit target for September. And uh, did some training with Derek Atten today. It was entertaining, eh? This is the biggest license the radio authorities ever given. And... If this radio station doesn't work, I'll struggle to get a job in Iceland. All right, take a level on your mic. ABC, egg and bacon, you, fried you bread, tomatoes. You've got to open toast. your mic first, man. <laughs> Today is Derek's very what first attempt at driving the desk and talking on the phone at the same time. Take a level, but you can't just open your mic and say one, two, three, otherwise everyone will hear it. Well, maybe That's it. it. Might be Program it. director Graham Ledger has organised the newsroom staff to be Derek's callers. Okay. Take that off. Bye. Right. Um, when you're yeah. ready to go up. So, come out with your jingle, which is T, and then go straight Call to the On 0161 400 for the Dexy debate. That's still up. On Century 105. Oh, we're doing it now? Yeah. Sorry, I thought we were just playing with that one. Sorry. So, start off, press your caller to air. So, they're ready to go. No, no, you haven't started yet. Press your caller on there. Right. Press your jingle, then start. Call now on 0161 400 0000 for the Dexy debate on Century 105. Mandy Line 1, how are you, love? Hello, I'm all right, thank you. Good. You had a nice day? Yeah, not bad. Not Only not bad? Yeah. Anyway, enough of that. What are you, what are you on for? 
Well, it's about Bill Clinton. I know that everyone keeps going on about him, all, all the other stuff that that he's been up to and everything. I mean, do you, do you care what he's been up to? No, I don't. Do you think no. most people care? No. Do you think he cares? Um, I think he cares on a personal level, yeah. Do you? He should get sacked. He should get sacked for picking that Monica Lewinsky. I mean, did you see her get out that cab? <laughs> oh, it put you off your breakfast. <laughs> okay, Mandy, thanks very much. We'll go now to line two to Steve. Steve, what do you think about what Mandy just said? I could just hear music and then somebody whittering. I thought it was you. Hello, Steve. Hello. What's up with you? Where are you from? Right. When the first caller was on, right, you're too quick to have your say. The primary aim for you is to decide what your view is. Mm. And you need to give yourself time to understand what his point is. Mm. Otherwise, he can make you look a right tit by he giving his point of view and then he's going to say to you at the end, well, that's not what I meant. So find out what his point is before you move on. Don't worry about this. The only time you think about this is when you're switching from one caller to another. But I've got to worry about it because I've got to get it right. You've got to get it right, yes. And I will, by the way. I, will. I know you will. Otherwise, you won't be on. <laughs> as well as setting up the new station, John is also in charge of Century 106, Nottingham. He's worried because their all-important audience figures are too low, and he's heading south to pay them a visit. The situation at Nottingham is that the station isn't performing. It um, should be now, after 12, 13 months on the air, 11, 12, or 13 percent, and it's now at 7 percent. So we've just got to go and down and um, put some showbiz into the output and lift the audience. Century 106. Century in Nottingham is a dream that didn't go well enough for Group Chief Myers. The old management has moved out and John's moved in and sacked nearly all the presenters. There's a new sound to Century 106 from this coming Monday morning. Century 106. The uh, receptionist said to me, every time I come, someone gets sacked. And so every time I walk through the door, they think, who's going today? And that, you know, it's quite upsetting really, because you know, you, I don't like to work like that. But if they're not part of the solution, they're part of the problem. And so for the last few days, it's um, like the Grim Reaper. Liz Jepsen, one of the so, few originals, uh, presents the religious programmes on Sunday mornings. About Sunday mornings, God and Century 106. What do you think? Right. I'm, I'm going to stay with God. This doesn't oh, well, sound. that's good. Yeah, stay with God. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stay with God and... Uh, and we're going to condense it a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to change the whole feel to it. What I want to do is to um, uh, make the breakfast presenter responsible for that part of the show, um, which means that they'll, uh, they'll j jack up the religious bit. Yeah. Um, and so it's really the um, way, where you fit in it, because I can't find a place for you. I have a problem on many levels with that, because where's your pre pre breakfast presenter going to get all any, any contacts from? And I'm glad you're keeping something in there. I'm not saying I don't want it in there. I'm saying don't make it look stupid and make Century 106 look stupid, because it's done in a way which patronises religion, or you get a presenter on there who doesn't know anything about it. The presenter doesn't need to be um, you know, greatly informed about religion to do a religious slot. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I... I don't, need I, to, I, I don't need to know a great deal about cars to, to, to talk to a mechanic. Mm. The bottom line is, what you're doing now, at that particular time of day, nobody listens. But that's not, that is a historical thing, that's not just because of the, the small role that I have on the Sunday morning. Yeah, but what that's I'm saying, you're slot, changing the whole thing. Yeah, but your slot, when it goes out, nobody listens. I have an asterisk. And an asterisk at that time, that the number of people who listen are so few, they can't be counted. Mm. You know, the way that I pay you is solely down to the advertising I sell. Mm. I solely down there. Now, if I'm not selling any advertising, I can't pay you. Mm. You know, the presenters live and die by their audience figures. And if their audience figures aren't good, their history, they're gone. And that's it. That's the way they live, and that's part of being a, a presenter. Sorry.
I think I think you, I think you, it's a shame for all of us actually. But there you go. Well, um, you know, it's, uh, religion will still play a part of Sunday mornings. We're just going to do it a little bit differently. Yeah. That's all. Mm. So. Okay. okay. Good luck. All right. Good Thanks very much. Okay. Good job. Bye. God on the phone. <laughs> Hello. I feel rather cheesed off actually about the way it's all happened. I'm not the slightest bit surprised that he doesn't want um, to be paid any more for expertise than he absolutely has to. He's interested in business, he's interested in selling advertising and that's the only thing that is, and I can understand that completely. It's about branding, it's about advertising, it's about market forces, that's the way all broadcasting is going. I'm not here to be popular. I'm here to make the station successful. And, you know, we're going to bring an MD in who'll be popular, but he'll have the same drive and the same rules and the same ambitions as I have. But um, it's not a popularity contest in, in any way. Back in the Northwest, John's won Manchester United commentary rights, but they'll only become exclusive locally next year. It'll cost him £250,000 annually. He'll need to get as much back as possible from a sponsor. So we've got Man United. How much do you think we can get for that in sponsorship terms? You'd say it's worth £200,000. Um, you'd probably have to negotiate down to £150,000. You can be smiles. Yeah, that's great. Terrific. And again. There's a deal to be done somewhere. It's just a question of what deal. In an ideal world, you'd be able to get 200, but 150,000. 150. There are companies out there with that sort of money. It's just a question of finding them. Now. Got to go. How much did we pay for this? 62 quid. 60 for a shirt? For a shirt. You're winding me up. But it's the best shirt in the country. 62 quid. We have just done a deal on rights to broadcast all home and away matches. It carries a price tag of a million pounds over four years. The advertising campaign's now in full swing. Derek's face is still noticeably absent. Uh, this is Morgan in the morning. It is 20 minutes to 11. That's right, 20 minutes to 11 now. And a high tea war, this is the greatest radio station. The greatest radio station in the whole of God's country. Uh, hi to everyone today who's uh, locked into our brand new radio station in Wigan. Uh, so hi to everyone who's tuning today at the Galleries Shopping Centre in uh, sunny Wigan. Only test transmissions are taking place, but John's wasting no time in building up the audience ready for the launch. The radio station for the Northwest. It's the men who tune in first. And it's the females who come later. And when they come in, you have to be female friendly. Well, advertisers want to advertise to housewives. So we target all our music to a 39 year old woman. I like the idea of every day I know people in the Northwest can switch on the radio and I can be talking to them. I mean, that's, that's a great feeling of, of influence and power that. I mean, I spent my life wanting to, to win whatever I've done, whether it be in politics or in business or in family life or anything else, I've always wanted to win. I find it difficult to ever envisage things not being successful. Did you want to... Uh... But John's programme director is not so confident about Derek's chances of success. Did you want them to talk about? Well, only it's about Derek, really, John. I mean, we've got to get... Um... He can't drive a desk. And I had him in the studio when we did the training last week. I mean, he's, he's great with the personality stuff. As soon as he pushes the button, it's like this. And I want to get a tech up in the driver regularly. Nah. That's a lot of crap, Graham. Yeah, but the, the fact is, it's the choice. You've either got him doing it right and pushing the buttons or copying up. And I mean, I think we've just got to be giving it right from day one. That's why I want a tech up, right? Now, once you allow 
someone like Derek Hatton to be driven, you're never going to get him behind the desk properly. But the why, why, should, why should we go to more expense? But the, we're going to end up with it as a sport in the ship for a hape of the tar for the sake of a tech-off, in my opinion. You can be in the studio with him. I mean, you know, you're, you're the programmer. You sit in the, pro you sit in the studio with him, but he sits at the desk, he drives the desk. If you want to stand behind him and ensure that all the things are going well, then that's fine. But we're not putting a tech op in to do something which I'm paying Derek to do. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two. If you say, oh, Derek, we're going to look after you because you're a celebrity, we're going to wrap you in cotton wool, we're going to get someone to drive the desk for you, he's going to say, oh, thanks very much. I'm paying this guy a, a lot of money. He should be able to, if, can he drive a car? He can drive a 40, 50,000 pound bloody car. He can drive a desk. There's no other way out of it. Right. Okay. This is the Derek Hatton Lunchtime Phone-In on Century 105. Call now on 0161 400 000. Yes, this is Derek Hatton on Century 105. The number is 0161 400 000. And on line one, we have... Liverpool. Sorry? Sean from Liverpool. Sean, Thanks. how are you, Sean? Start, that, take again. start, that, start again. that again. Get away, Sean. Start again. I'll come back to you in a minute. Okay, okay. Take it further down. Put it, no, hang on. Put it back there. Hang on. Hang on. Try to put it back on. What's the name on well, hold? Don't, don't press buttons if you don't know what you're pressing. This is Century 105 News. Century 105. The headlines, Blackpool on the up after tower sale, twin... The station is now stepping up to doing dry runs in the studios 24 hours a day. And Scotty McClue's war too. His show could upset the radio authority and even affect the license. He had no right to tell that man he was thick. He said, well, why is there no right to tell the man he's thick when he is thick? I'm not on about that. I'm on about the fact that you get someone up from Oldham. I don't want you saying everybody in Oldham's thick. I call them thick because they sound thick. You're missing the whole bloody point. You know, You're thick here. Listen, Oldham, listen to what I'm saying. They're from Oldham and they're saying, uh, 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 So you're saying nothing. everyone from Oldham's no, thick? No, 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 I'm not saying that. Well, that's I'm my saying, point. No, but I'm not, I'm not saying the thick, but I'm saying that a lot of people from certain areas sound thick. I do take it to the line, I take it right up to the line, and um, the byproduct of that is you're going to upset some people. I don't want to upset him because he's my boss and he's bought the product he's bought scotty mcclue's megaphone in um now i'm going to do a big big business for him but uh if i cross the line you know he'll 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 ax the show but i don't think i do cross the line and i've said where are you phoning from they said i'm phoning from bolton and I said, oh, well, that explains it. Well, that's because humor. I think that's no, humor. No, yeah, that's but I, humor. I don't think I'm then no, saying I'm not from fighting Bolton against that. But what I'm saying is, is that occasionally you come on and say, I'm sick of this love. Every person from Manchester is yeah. thick. Yeah. And that's what upsets people. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, I can't defend that with the radio authority. Sure. I can defend to the cows come home you saying, he called this person thickhead. Yeah. And I can yeah, say, well, I listen to the right. tape and I agree with him. Yeah. I can't defend everyone from Manchester's yeah. thick because they're plainly not. The first ball and we're not even on here yet. Everything's been having a pretty bumpy ride, including the sponsorship deal from Manchester United. The problem with these deals is they're always brought, and until you've got something in writing, People can tell you they're going to do a deal. They've got an interest in taking you as late as possible so that they get the price down. So it's been tense, very tense. But we have done a deal with Northwest Ford dealers. It's fantastic news. It's absolutely fantastic. So John's got most of the sponsorship he needs to balance his books. But now there's another problem with numbers. When we won the license, we agreed to do so much speech, 40% of my output must be speech. But because we hired Degsy, um, and I'm not prepared at this stage to let him do two hours of a phoning, I'm only going to let him do one hour, means I'm right on the borderline of my speech, in fact I'm under it. 
So uh, I've got to ensure that all the other presenters do more speech to compensate for Degsy not doing enough speech. So there's a lot riding on him, really. Stop. I think at the end of the day, I've just, I'm, I'm just got to eat me and worry about it afterwards. Oh, well, you won't have an afterwards if you've died. Hey? If you die, you won't have an afterwards to worry about, will you? Well, no, but what I'm saying is that... <laughs> that's right. But he's developed a lot, but having heard him the last couple of times, is whether he's personally got that charisma about him that people actually want to ring in and speak to Derek Hatton. So he has to learn very quickly. He's got a learning curve, like the face of the Eiger at the moment. He's really got to climb up there. Call the Northwest's biggest phone the Degsy Debate. Derek Hatton on Century 105. Century 105. Good morning, you're listening to Century 105 on Tuesday, September the 8th. It's 8am and a star is born. <laughs> For the stations, investors and advertisers, it's Bucks Fizz all round. Our first ad. I like this bit the best, this is the money. You may already be the ching <laughs> So, hey, so far, so good. <laughs> right now, we're taking calls for the Derry Cat and phone in when you can talk about absolutely anything under the sun, if you can get a word in edgewise, of course. I certainly struggled. When I'm finishing and going into the news, what sort of, what time do I press next? About ten seconds to go or something like that. Who's going to be in the studio for Digsy? Right, do you know how to work the desk? Yes. Are you absolutely sure? Yes. Right. Everton hope to end their goal drought tonight at Nottingham Forest. If they don't, they could slip to the bottom of the Premiership table if Southampton don't lose at Leeds. Well, he wants to Man United because he's, he's happy with football, but, you know, but I don't want to tick all the women off today. All right. That's it for now. I'll be back with more at two o'clock. <laughs> Derek's about to talk to his public for the first time. The region's big issues, today's big stories. Call now, 10161 <laughs> for the Dexy Debate on Century 105. Yes, it's 108 and it's me, Derek Hatton, with the Northwest number one radio phone-in. Call the Dexy Debate, Derek Hatton, on Century 105. Good afternoon. Well, we're here at last. This is going to be the best, the most lively, the most interesting radio phone in, in the world. Well, what's going on in the Northwest today? I suppose we've all to talk about Man United and, uh, and Murdoch. And I may be in the minority, but if Rupert Murdoch walked in to buy Everton, I would be over the moon. I can understand me being jealous because it's not Everton, it's Man United. I can understand Arsenal, I can, uh, no, uh, I can uh, understand Leeds, I can understand Liverpool, I can understand Bolton, Berry, Blackburn, Blackpool, or whatever annoyed it because it's not them. Anyway, we're now going to go to the first call. First call, Steve, Hi. where are you from, mate? From Gorton in Manchester. Very good. What do you want to talk about, mate? From the Murdoch. Murdoch? Yeah. Have you listened this morning, by the way, to uh, Century? I have, all morning. Well, have you been listening to the, uh, have you listened, listened to over the last month or so? Yeah, we're tuned in, tuned in every day. We've got them all <laughs> at it now. <laughs> yeah, the, the problem you've got now is the music goes and people like me get in the way. Yeah, well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can live with that, mate, can't we? Yeah, we can live with it. Yeah. <laughs> right. The listeners will tell me how long to give him. If his phones are busy, if he's reacting well on the phones, uh, then he'll succeed. He can virtually control the Premiership. But if Degsy does not score on his first survey, then he's back selling newspapers on the street in Liverpool. So there's no more fussy ones, is there? Not at the moment, no. Listening to Scotty McClure's megaphone in back to the telephones because we are stored out of the door and staff it through with calls. Now that is Scottish for saying we are extremely busy, so I don't want any idiots, I don't want any plonkers, I don't want any fools. Uh, that covers most of you, I think. And Wally, 
Yeah. That's an appropriate name to pop up next, isn't it? It's February the 4th, and the official audience figures are released at 8am today. It's crunch time for John. Will he get the number of listeners he's been promising his advertisers? This is the worst day of the year. Worst day, because uh, your life depends on that call. Sales-wise, we're saying that we'll get 7%. We have to get that, uh, because we've sold the company on that. Less than seven. So, and I'm going home. So. His wife, Linda's, made a special trip yeah. over from Newcastle. Yeah. It's quite a heart-stopping moment from the time from you pick the phone up till you get to hear what the figure is. It's about 10 seconds, but for that 10 seconds, your whole heart stops waiting for the figure. Hi. Hello, John. It's Rachel. Hi. Hi, I've got some figures for you. Right, you sound, you sound down. No, should I be? No, go on, you always do this to me. <laughs> Hit me with it. You wouldn't expect it any other way. Okay, you've got pen? Yeah. The population is 5076. Yeah. The weekly reach is 474. Which is nine percent. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Total hours of four oh three one. Yes. 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 Average hours eight point five per listener. Yeah. Market share four point seven percent. Whoa! That is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, bloody marvellous! I tell you. Okay. Bye. 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 <laughs> Nine percent. <laughs> First rate jar is nine percent real. Yeah! In its region, Century has come in at number seven, ahead of all but three of the other commercial stations. BBC took the top three positions. It's four point seven. Century in Nottingham is doing better, but it's not out of the woods yet. And if you don't mind, I'm just gonna spray some champagne. All right? <laughs> One man is particularly relieved by the listening figures for his show. Well, are you ready? Here's Linda McCartney. It's me being a DJ. I've never been a DJ before. Oh, we have once, didn't I, when all the, uh, the phones went down. Uh, it's me being a DJ. Do you think I'll be a good DJ, Derek? You're passing the audition very well. I'm passing the audition very well. And it's uh, Linda McCartney, and it's... It's definitely far better than I thought it was going to be, and I'm enjoying it much, much more than I thought I was going to enjoy it. But the number of bits about all the buttons and the faders and having to keep it going and looking at the screen, that actually is a talent. You can see the way broadcasters are, some are so much better than others. Dare I say it, I mean, I'd be able to sit in front of any desk and operate any, you know, radio or television show. I don't think the reason why that song has been banned has got anything to do with the fact that they swear on it. I just think it's crap. Degsy I mean, was our biggest risk. Appalling. And I wouldn't publicise him. But now I would. You're sort of jumping around, it's great. It's Half the time he talks a complete lot of tosh. But Derek comes on and the audience goes up. So, you know, I think we'll get his picture taken. I think I'll put him in some bus shelters and uh, backs of buses. <laughs> John Myers is not accepting any more applications from aspiring phone-in hosts.